in. Oi, shoelaces. Do you need some your lazy snob? Uh, Ricky! Martin, I'm Martin today. Not all day. You said all day. I'm Martin, so I'm the eldest. So? So you have to do up my shoelaces. Get Cuddlesome to do them for you. You get your Cuddlesome to do it for you. My Cuddlesome's above all that. He's a very stylish bear. He only makes tea. If I'm Martin and you're Richard, then it's my Cuddlesome that makes tea today and yours that does up shoelaces. That's cheating! No, it isn't. It's your game. Well, it's stupid then. You made it up. No, I didn't. You're Martin today, so you're the eldest, so you made it up. <sighs> I want to watch telly. Well, the news on now. I don't care. You hate the news. No, I don't. I'm Martin today, so I'm a brain box creep and I adore the news. Oh, shut up. Come on. Incorporated announced today that the film and related products has already grossed a staggering £800,000 before the first day of filming. From high flying financial backers with hmm. to profit, very and interesting. From world oh, release. Shut up, very, very interesting. Richard, very, very, up. very, very Richard, interesting. Shut up. I talked to Uncle Turvey, the creator of the original comic strip, about this latest development of his famous character. Look, Cuddlesome! It's you! You're famous! astonished at the staggering popularity of your character, not only here in Britain, but worldwide. I, I must admit, it, it, it has taken me aback a little. It's very rare to meet a child these days that hasn't got one of your cuddles and toys. Even my children have got one. Yes, well, well I, I'm afraid I, I rather dislike the puppet. They, they, they lack the humour of my character, I think. Yeah. I know what you mean. Still, still, I... I'm grateful for the pennies, eh? Well, what about this film? Well, then, the money will be nice. Mm, but do you feel that any film can do the character justice? I seem to remember you being particularly incensed by some episodes of the cartoon series on television. Well, uh, they were absurd. Very American. Trite. But I, I, I think the charm of Cuddlesome is it's a very English eccentricity. Something I saw every day in my colleagues at work before I took up the drawing and writing full time. Ah, oh, yes. Now, I believe you were a doctor? No, no, no. Not a doctor. A genetic engineer. Yeah, that was before I started to write and invent. Boring. Oh, I was watching that. That's what you do. I'm richer today and I think it's boring. And where's my tea? Mum? Cuddlesome and I are going to make movies in the garden. I'll be the camera, you say your lines. Hello, my name is Cuddlesome. I love you. Do you love me? More emotion, darling. Come on, wiggle your snout. What's your name, little boy? I'm being Martin Mill today. Give me a cuddle, Martin. This won't hurt.
Doctor! 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 Oh, there you are. Tea is served. Thank you. I've been trying to get that wretched paint off. All I've managed to do so far is make a mess of the doors. Anyway, I don't think it is paint. There's obviously nothing I can do about the console, of course. Whoever's done that, they're obviously not an interior decorator. Drink your tea, Doctor. It'll get cold. What do you think justice is? Do you think it's a person? That man I saw in the console room with... Shut up, Truman. Where next, Doctor? Hmm? What do we do now? Nothing. Oh, Doctor, what's wrong? I'm thinking. Thinking? You've been sitting here for days, weeks. It might be longer. Who knows? You lose track of time in this thing. Are you mourning? Is that what it is? Well, if it is, then that's all very well. But sitting here moping about it won't achieve anything. Doctor. Doctor, I was horrified when Fionara died. You know I was. We both were. But... I hate to say it, but we've seen so much death. If we were to sit here, cringing in the shadows every time somebody died... It's as if you're frightened to face life all of a sudden. You mean life must go on? <laughs> exactly. And what sort of life am I leading if the high point of my week is scraping red paint off the console room door? You're safe. Maybe, maybe not. Doctor, I don't want to be safe. It's boring. You'd rather be dead? Truman, you can't blame me for being cautious after what's happened. And you can't assume that I'll die the moment I step out of those doors. That's completely irrational. Fionara's death was irrational. Justice will be served. Scrawled across the console room is irrational. Gallifrey destroyed. Rhea's then death. Do something about it, for heaven's sake. Go back to Gallifrey before the Daleks invaded. Go back to Earth before Fionara bought that drink. Use this ship rather than sitting in it feeling sorry for yourself. You know very well that would be a direct contravention of the first law of time. Oh, so what? It'd be going against my nature, my morality. The Time Lords are hardly going to stop you, are they? They don't exist anymore. I have to live with my mistakes. We all do. And with my solitude. You're hardly alone. Ah, but you're wrong. I am alone. Very much so. Thanks a lot. What was that? It sensed something. The TARDIS sensed something. Can you feel it? Something near. It couldn't be. It is! What? Another TARDIS! I thought you said there weren't any other... Come on, old girl. You can't lose her now, not after all this time. Ah. Like a bee to honey. We're on our way, Mr. Crouch. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Uncle Turvey's Pleasure Palace, a place where your wildest dreams come true. Well, Doctor? Marvellous. It's all marvellous. I'll bring my kids here, if I ever know. Excuse me, are you Uncle Turvey? Yes, my dear. Oh, I wonder. Could you sign one of your books for me? It's for my son. Though we all love your stories, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, what's his name? Simon. He's in hospital. It would do him a lot of good. Lovely, lovely. Uh, to Simon, keep smiling, Uncle Turvey. Will that do? Good, good, good. Enjoy yourself. Oh, sorry, Jim. That's quite all right. Anyway, I'm glad you like it. I, I must admit, I, I would have preferred Turvyland. There's a, a sort of a ring to it, much more of a ring to it than Cuddlesome's Pleasure Palace, don't you think, eh? You always were a bit of a negative. Oh, oh, oh perhaps. But all credit to you. I would have got nowhere had it not been for my colleagues and my league of assistants. That's a long time ago. We're both in a very different line of business now, I'm glad to say. Now you are now. Look, I didn't come here to chat about old times, Ronald. Or to see you showing off your Disney world. A pleasure, Alice. When I called you, I hoped you could help. Can you? Help? Yes. I'd rather think I can help. Oh, thank God. So you might end up in charge of your profession. People will write books about us. 
Yes, my little venture may well help your career, certainly. My career? I'm not here about my career. I only want to cure. Jim, 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 calm down. Here's a good fellow. Uh, come into my office. Let me explain. Ah, do sit down. I'd rather stand. Uh, drink? Get to the point. Yes, yes, well, well. Uh, look, you don't mind if I... Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, as you know, I've been busying myself recently with my stories, my drawings. This place, I've... I've become greatly respected in the media world for my imaginative flair. I, I, I think you could say that my cuddlesome character has well and truly captured the hearts of not only the British public, but, well, of the world. I agree, but... But, exactly, but it is not enough. Now, we both know why I left our profession to dedicate my life to entertaining the young. <sighs> to be crippled by lack of government funds is hardly a way to earn a decent living. Hardly decent, but at least not at the end. And it wasn't lack of funds that made the majority of us pull out. Yes, well, well, that's all water under the bridge. Please, may I go on? Good. At the heart of me, beyond the showman, the... The entertainer, the <laughs> Uncle Turvey figure, there's a scientist with an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, for the development of our species and our society, and I yearn for recognition, as any man with ambition does. You have Not it. Not artistic recognition. Scientific recognition. And at last... I have the funds, the equipment, and the means to achieve that recognition. With the right men and women at my side, the best qualified scientific support team, I, I uh, we, we can achieve more than any scientist has dreamed of. What are you asking me to do? Join me. Join me on this project, and your name will live on. Uh, besides, Mike, in the annals of history. What project? Mm. There. Look. The green sheets show you how far we've come already. It's further than we ever managed before. And, uh, The white? That is our next step. You are insane. It is possible. But whether it is or it isn't, you can't do it. With your help, I could. But Toby, you don't seem to understand. I'm a doctor. My job is to cure people, not kill them. <laughs> I hardly think my work amounts to murder. I came in here in the hope that you could help me. You're a medical genius. I left a hospital full of dying people in the wildest belief that somewhere in that mind there was a cure to this disease. What, 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 what disease? Oh, for God's sake, don't you read the papers? I never believe anything I read in the papers. Apart from the entertainment section, that is. Then I suggest you come off cloud nine and open your eyes to the real world. And if it makes any difference to you, think on this. Most of the victims have been children. And it's growing. Within a week, you might not have any customers left in this place. They'll all be dead. Mr. Foreman? Oh. Well, tell him I need to speak to him urgently. Ronald Turvey. No, Monday morning will not do. I need to speak to him now. Earth, late 20th century. Got it! Come along, then. Doctor, why all this sudden excitement? I would have thought that was obvious, Truman. 
No sooner have I resigned myself to the death of my people than bingo! There's one a matter of minutes away. But you said all the TARDISes were gone, that there wasn't a single trace of one anywhere in any time. Not in... operational, no. You mean this one's not working? I would assume that's why there's a distress beacon on board. I told you the old girl sensed something. It would have been like hearing a long-lost cousin crying for help. No wonder she was shaken up a bit. And where there's a TARDIS, there's a Time Lord, as the old saying goes. You can't be sure of that. Stuff and nonsense. The Time Lords are all dead. I'm here, aren't I? Besides, when you tread on an ant hill, that doesn't kill an ant at the other end of the garden. <laughs> now you're talking in riddles, Doctor. Let's see. How do I switch this detector on? Ah! Onwards, Mr. Crouch. You never know, it might be Romana. Who? Romana Ver... 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 Romana Ver... Ver, Ver Night time. It must be summer. Why? It's not raining. Doctor, what's that awful smell? Cabbages, I think. Pulverised. Oh, I think we've landed in someone's vegetable patch. How do we get out? Over the wall? You're joking. Well, we can hardly walk through their house, can we? It's bad enough squashing their cabbages. Hello? Anyone in? Truman, stop that! You can't just... Are you the doctor? No, he is. No, I'm not. But that is, I am, but I'm rather busy Come just in, now. Come please. I didn't think you'd get it so quickly. No, I... I... Oh, oh dear, I, I, I've i been bleeped. I'm so sorry. If I might use you the front door... You can't go. My son's ill. So is somebody else from the sound of it. If you call a doctor, you I'm... Are a doctor, doctor. Well, then call another one. I'm afraid I'm rather busy. Martin might die. Martin, is that your son? Yes. I'm very sorry, but I, I really... You can't just walk out and let her son die. You'd never forgive yourself. You don't understand. I understand perfectly, doctor. You're being selfish. I'm what? You're letting self-indulgent whims about loneliness come in the way of compassion. Is there something wrong with you? No, I, um, I'm sorry. Um, where's the patient? Upstairs. I'll take you up there. I'll take that, Doctor. And when Cuddleson saw the state of his pigsty, he set to work immediately with his vacuum. Of course this wasn't a oh, Richard, what on earth are you doing in here? Reading to him. Go back to bed. He's very Ooh. ill, Ricky. So am I. Don't be silly, dear. I've been sick twice. That's because you've got a tummy bug. Now get back into bed. Who are you? Are you the doctor? No, I'm the nurse. Unusual swelling. Discoloration of the skin. It's turning into the hole. Ricky, go to bed. I'm Martin. I don't have to. Richard. I'll take him. Come on, you. Oh. This is all wrong. I've never seen anything like it. No, you wouldn't have done. At least you shouldn't have done. What do you mean? Last time I saw this... He hasn't seen any bright lights in the sky, little green men and so on. What? Anything out of the ordinary. Oh, Doctor, what are you talking about? Can you cure him or not? I think so. The cure's easy enough. Even if I haven't got any to hand, I can easily manufacture some back in the oh, lab. thank God. It's the cause. What's the date, please? Oh, the 15th. What's the book? Can't you read? Cuddleson makes a mess. Mm, not exactly classical. How old are you? Eight and three quarters. That old? I was reading textbooks on intergalactic law when I was your age. I read Star Wars too. I've got 18 action figures. Very nice. Why are you dressed like that? What do you mean? Like a pirate. You look stupid. Charming. I think I'm going to be sick again. Aspirin and Heisman, Carol, morphine and... No, oh, come on. I've got no more time to waste looking for antidotes. There are more important things to do. Oh, why do I always find the human race so impossible to ignore? Can't they look after themselves for once? I don't suppose you've got a spare shirt, have you? Your son's just vomited over mine. Is he all right? Oh, he's dozed off now. Which surgery do you come from? I beg your pardon? Does the doctor always leave his medical bag in his patient's back garden? <laughs> he is rather eccentric. You're telling me. Got it! A whole file of it only needs a few drops, really. You can cure him. <laughs> he should be completely recovered by morning. Oh, thank you. Oh, not well, Mr. Crouch. Ha, ha. I'll get you a shirt. There are a few of my ex-husband's clothes locked away somewhere. Thank you. Come on now. Open your eyes. That's it. Now, just a few drops in this one. Not for long. It'll soon go down. Go to sleep. Is he all right? 
We should sleep fairly easily now. The swelling will start to go down in a couple of hours. Then you should take it easy for the next few days. Thank you, Doctor. It had me worried, I can tell you. I tried everything, but there was only so much I could do. Yes. Well, if you'd excuse Is me... Is he OK? Yes, nurse. Off we go, then. My bleeper... He doesn't please. look OK. He will do. Bleeper, please. Here you are, Doctor. Bye-bye. Thanks again. I can't just wander off, Doctor. I'm wearing her ex-husband's shirt. Don't worry. Pop it through the door tomorrow sometime. Thank you. I'll do my best. I hope your son's Come all on, right. Truman. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're being very rude today, Doctor. Am I? The least you could have done was to stay for a cup of tea with them. I did what was expected of me, Truman. That wasn't what I came here oh, for. I know, but that kid looked awful. Uh, yes, and another few days and he would have looked decidedly dead. You're joking. I've seen that disease before. It kills. But you cured him. Yes, well, I've been to the 23rd century, haven't I? I had a handy file of antidote. I thought you said we were in the late 20th century. 15th of June, 1989, 11.35pm. Isn't 300 years rather a long time to discover a cure? It would be, yes, if the disease had existed now. Meaning... You've got a brain, haven't you, Mr Crouch? Ah. I think we're quite close. You're trying to tell me that the disease shouldn't exist here and now, aren't you, Doctor? Probably. If I were you, I'd find that quite worrying. If I were me, I'd find that quite worrying. Hello? Uh, hello? Someone there? Mum? Martin? <gasps> Cuddlesome! Hello, Martin. We've come to take you on an adventure. My name's not... Who's we? There are many of us. Look down there. <laughs> Wait, my mum. Are you ready to come with us? I'll just put my shoes on. Can I bring my cuddlesome too? Of course you can. He can't talk like you. Of course I can, Martin. We all can. Fantastic. How can I get down there without my mum hearing? Jump. It won't hurt. Graveyard. Your ancestors used to bury their dead. Oh, here? Yes. How unhygienic. Hmm. Oh, where is it? What are you looking for? A gravestone? A tree? A bush? Who knows? The chameleon circuit may be fully operational. Perhaps not. Oh, um, tell me if you see anything odd. Like what? Like a grandfather clock or a Punch and Judy stall. Just use your imagination. I think I've found something. Where? What? This gravestone thing. It's humming. That's it. Let's hope they've left the door open. What door? Aha! Uh -huh. Open sesame! Oh dear. Oh, the is... You were right. It's in a bit of a state, isn't it? Only enough energy to operate the distress beacon. <laughs> Not good. Not good. What's that? I think perhaps you should wait outside. Oh, come off it. Hang on. Hang on, I've heard that before. Truman, it... please do as I say. Okay. Okay. Hello? It's you, isn't it? I'm right, aren't I? I thought so. <coughs> Dr. Askren. <laughs> Do you know, I'm actually pleased to see you. The conqueror delights in the death of the vanquished, Doctor. I didn't mean that. Nonetheless, it is ironic that it shall be you who performs the last rites. I have no intention of doing that. You have no choice, Doctor. Look around you. Even my TARDIS knows that the end is near. I must admit, I fancied a rather more regal and dignified death, but we must settle for what we are given. Askren, we two are the last of our race. I can't let you die. It was a different story before. You were quite willing to let me rot in my own addiction. <coughs> and Sargol deals a particularly nasty death. 
I know what it's like to suffer saga or withdrawal, and I know it can be overcome. Oh, yes, Doctor. Maybe by those of more strength. With more will to live, perhaps. But I have been indolent, Doctor. I have let myself drown in my addiction. Let it overcome me. We can build a zero room at the very least. Do you think we have enough power? You jest, Doctor. In my TARDIS, it's not far away. I'll take you there. I would die on my first step. Please, Doctor, let me die with some dignity at least. You don't understand what you're asking me to do. Didn't you feel the death cry of our people? Of course I did. Why not let one more voice join the millions of others? I will not. I cannot. You must, Doctor. It is a matter of honour. Oh, hurry up, Doctor. It's getting cold. Oh, what's it? Wretched shirt made out of paper? Uh-huh. I think we've got company. Somebody there? Hello. My name is Caddison. I love you. Do you love me? Askren? Askren? Askren, regenerate, damn you, regenerate! Why wouldn't he let me help him? Oh, there you are, Doctor. You've been gone for hours. Where's your friend? Dead. Oh. Um, what now? The last rites. Then we leave this planet. Hmm. What's happening? The final decomposition of the ship. He dies, it dies too. Let's go. I've got some thinking to do. Mind if I bring my bear? Right. Come on, bear. Gullible idiot. Furlong, have my car brought round to the Kemsing estate at once. Right away, sir. And the bottle of the very best Moe Chandon, chilled. It's time for a celebration. struck the affluent areas harder and with an unheard of rapidity. The number of cases in North London doubled overnight, and doctors say that more are coming in by the hour. Later in the programme, we'll be talking to the Minister of Health about hospital overcrowding and the search for a miracle cure. This is John Collins, Radio 1 Breakfast Time News. Okay, Doctor. I'm thirsty and I'm cold and I want to sit down. Yes, yes. Two teas, please. Sugar? No, thank you. Yes. Yes, please. 64. What? 64 pence for the teas. Uh, do you have a credit system? Well, take luncheon vouchers, if that's what you mean. Oh, I'm sorry I haven't got any earth money on me. Oh, yes. From Mars, are we? Stony Dimmer 34 in the Ganimar system. Lovely. Now, pay up or it'll get cold. But I told you, I haven't yeah. got any earth... Keep the change. Thanks, Lucky. Be prepared. Weren't you ever a Boy Scout, not as far as I know? He was a friend then? No. Oh. A relation? Truman, is it really necessary for me to justify my grief, or would you like me to write an essay? I just thought it might help to talk about it. It wouldn't. I'm sorry. Do you like my bear? Look. It's thoroughly repulsive. I didn't think it was that bad. A little gaunt, perhaps. Where did you get it? I picked it up in the graveyard. Get rid of it. Of course, Doctor. Anything you say, Doctor. Oh, for heaven's sake, Truman, you asked my opinion. Why the constant whinging sarcasm every time I open my mouth? I sometimes wonder... Oh, what does it matter, anyway? Any decade now, this ridiculous little planet will be engulfed in a nuclear holocaust and nothing I say to you, or say to her, or him, or him, or even them is going to make the blindest bit of difference. Let's sit here and wait, shall we? With any luck, this revolting tea will kill us off first. Doctor, what's wrong with you? 
all of a sudden you've become a fate. A realist. The human race survives. Oh, yes, little bits of it. The most corrupt of them. The power crazy, the affluent. The scientist, the geologist, my ancestor. Then I pity you. Doctor, you can't possibly blame the human race for the death of the Time Lords or the destruction of Gallifrey, all of which happened in a completely different time, a completely different place. I'm not blaming them. What makes you think I'm blaming them? Why be so vindictive? I simply don't feel like being tolerant, that's all. And a race that can let that sort of thing happen is beyond my sympathy. What? That's a toy, a teddy bear. Is it? Oh, who cares? But you did. Maybe I did. Once. Maybe I was wrong. Excuse me? No, we don't want any more of your foul tea, thank you very much. I was just wondering. I wouldn't bother if I were you. Sorry. Well, I never. Sorry, he's a little upset. I've never been so... I'd be obliged if you finish your tea and go, young man. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Doctor, I think you ought to calm down. Look, worlds have come to an end before. People have died before. We've both seen it happen. But it doesn't help to dwell on it. Life... Well, as you said, life goes on, doesn't it? Shout at me if you like. Believe it or not, I understand. Before he became a renegade like me, Askren was a gentleman. That was when gentlemen existed on Gallifrey. A wit and a scholar. It was a sign of the old times, his wanting me to perform the last rites. Took me back, that's all. Yes. You're quite right, though. The best way on is forward. Perhaps we ought to find the TARDIS. Pass me that napkin, will you? Sure. I want to write an apology to that poor lady. Sorry I couldn't get here any earlier. The hospital's jam-packed with patients, all kids. But he's... Sally, all... I've got to make one thing perfectly clear. His chances aren't too good. He's got it, I assume. Yes, but, but, but he You has... were right not to bring him in. He's probably got as much chance of recovery here as he has under supervision. There will be a cure, I'm positive. But it'll take time. Oh, if only that wretched Turvey had agreed to help instead of living on cloud nine. Do you know what he said, Sally? He didn't even know about the disease. He said he... Oh, I'm sorry. You don't want to hear about all this. Now, is Martin upstairs? Yes, but he's perfectly all right. You the mean other... he hadn't got it? He had it, yes. But the doctor came and cured him. Sally, this is no time for practical jokes. I'm not joking. God, do you think I joke about Martin's life? What sort of a mother do you think I am? Oh, calm down. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's just that I thought he was going to die. He had the symptoms. Skin coloration, swelling. Yes, that's why I called you. I didn't want to waste time. I thought you'd sent the other doctor in your place. <sighs> Hello, Uncle Jim. Martin! I'm Richard today. Don't be silly, Martin. Don't you think you ought to be asleep? I'm hungry. Are you sure he had all the symptoms? Sure, yes. But he's completely normal. There's no swelling, anything. Where's Ricky? Upstairs in bed. No, he isn't. What? Stay here. I'll go and find him. Do you want to fix me a sandwich, Uncle Jim? Mum's busy. I'll get it. Hello. Ah, yes. Oh, good. Recovered then. <laughs> yes, thank you. Mum's upstairs. Really? It wasn't your mother we wanted, actually. Uh... Who are you? I'm the doctor. Are you the husband? Ex-husband, doctor. Oh. Uh, no, I'm a, a friend of the family. Peters. Dr. Jim Peters. Oh, uh, how do you do? Are you the one with the miracle cure? There are no miracles, Dr. Peters. Only surprises. But you cured Martin. Uh, yes. Yes, I suppose I did. Uh, do sit down, Mr. Turvey. Thank you, thank you. Very kind, I'm sure. Uh, drink? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, please. No. What brings you to me today? I thought Sunday was meant to be a day of rest. I had to... to show you this. I'm afraid I have no interest in the gutter press, Mr. Turner. It doesn't matter what paper it's in, Mr. Foreman. It'll be the same in the Financial Times. People are being wiped out across the country, probably across the world. Ah, you're talking about this space disease. I believe that's what they're calling it. Young children turning into little green men or some such rubbish. I've seen it on television. It's horrible. Come, come, Turvey. I would have thought a man of your background would find it fascinating. I've also seen the date it started. And the age of the victims. It struck me overnight. They were all children. So? It's the dolls. 
It must be. The cuddlesome toys. Oh, Mr. Turvey, what are you saying? You told me they were being programmed to find the perfect child for my project. That there was some kind of microchip that would find the body most suitable for my requirements. And how better to test the body's strength than by submitting it to a rare disease? It was you. Come, come, Ronald. Don't look so shocked. You agreed that the choice of child is important. Important, yes. But not to the extent Mr. Of... Turvey, you seem to forget that my company is providing 100% of the finance for your little project. I could quite easily invest my money in some worthier cause. Not that I wish to undermine the importance of your work, of course. I, I, I was simply surprised at your methods. Na naturally, I can see you had the project's best interests at heart. Naturally. And, of course, there was no need to have informed me of... Every detail of your methods. You didn't want to alarm me. That's right. Hmm. I take it that there are no further points you wish to raise? Not at the moment. Oh, only one. Jim Peters, an old working colleague. I, I approached him about the project and he refused to be involved. I see. And you thought his involvement essential? No, not essential. But it would have been nice. Hmm. Well, then perhaps you can tell me where I can find him. I'm sure I can bring him around to our way of thinking, one way or another. It started about a week ago in Wales. Hundreds of kids all seem to come down with it at once. And surely it's been in the international press. Oh, I never read on holiday. <laughs> well, anyway, it spread like wildfire. No, it's more or less all over the place. All the victims are children? Well, more or less. One in 20 are adults. It doesn't make any difference, though. The disease is just as deadly. It would be. You've come across it before? Well, of course I have, Doctor. Uh, sorry, yeah, yes, yes, I have. Then your miracle cure wasn't a fluke. A fluke? No, it wasn't. Well, then you've got to come with me. I haven't got to do anything. Uncle Jim, when am I going to get my sandwich? He's gone. Who's gone? Richard. I've looked everywhere, even the attic. He's disappeared. <laughs> well, hello, my friend. Who are you? Father Christmas? Do you believe in Father Christmas? N no. Ah, then I'm not Father Christmas. Is this where we're going to have our adventure? Perhaps. There are plenty of places to go. The snowy wastes of the Arctic. The land of cowboys and Indians. The depth of the jungle. But they're all sound effects, and all those animals are made of cardboard. Oh, dear. Whatever happened to the wonders of a childish imagination? Can't you show me anything good? I made your cuddlesome come to life, didn't I? Did you? Well, well, there was a little help on the mechanics, I admit, but the creative genius was all mine. What's your name? Hmm? Yeah. Uncle Turvey. Hmm. Surely you recognize me, my boy. Hmm? You write the cuddlesome books. Yes. <laughs> Recognition at last. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. We're going to be such good friends, you and I. I don't like cuddlesome makes a mess. It's silly. Silly? Uh, yeah. I suppose it is a little silly. Can I go home now? Go home? You've only just arrived. I have wonderful things to show you, my boy. Like what? Like this. What are they? Creatures of your wildest dreams. Winged fish. Eels with legs strong enough to win an Olympic trophy. Dolphins 
with the brain of a cat and the eyes of a crabfish. Yes, so it is. What's your name, my boy? Richard Milne. Richard Milne. <laughs> yes, Richard. I think you'll do very nicely. Sorry, you know, he's always doing this. Yes, but this time Look, the do doctor and I have got to get to the hospital. There are lives that need saving. Truman, stay here and make yourself useful. Of course, Doctor. See you later, Sally. Now, don't worry. Hmm. Well, I'm not sitting here doing nothing. I'm going to look for Ricky. Oh, hang on, I thought Jim just said this sort of thing is always happening. It's not like this. Not usually. Look, I know it sounds stupid, but he normally leaves a, a note for me in his room. A map. It's a kind of game. He needs attention, I suppose. Only this time, it's different. There's no note. No note. Nothing. He would have left me something if he could. He's been kidnapped or something. 57881. Speaking. What? Oh, my. Where? Yes, I know where it is. That was the police. They think they found him. They... They want me to go and identify the body. Excuse me, you can't go in there, I'm afraid. I'm his mother, Sergeant. You've got to listen through, please. Oh, hold on. I'm coming too. No, Martin, you stay with Mr. Crouch. He's my brother, Mum. I'm not staying here if it's him. No, no. Yes. Oh, yes, you can come if you want. You can go through now, Mum. Sorry we couldn't move him. Didn't think there was much point. What happened? I don't think your boy should stay. Just show us, please. God, it's him! How can you tell? A steady on, sir. That's my watch. Yours? He was wearing it yesterday. He was me. Excuse me, uh, Sergeant Furlong. Might I talk to the lady and gentleman? Uh, of course, Mr. Foreman. Who, who are you? My name is Foreman. I own this factory, and I wish to apologise on behalf of my company for Martin's death. We were under the impression that the building was burglar-proof. Apparently, your son thought otherwise and touched some live machinery. You mean he was electrocuted? I'm afraid the shock must have thrown him through that window up there. Most unfortunate. Though I don't think we're liable. We will be more willing to compensate in any Compensate? 
for the death of my uh, son. Madam, try to calm down. If you'd like to accept this small gift as a gesture of our condolences... Let's get out of here, Truman. Sir, your other boy, at least. Oh, God. All right, all right, I'll carry the blasted thing. Come on, Sally, let's go. Such a shame, Sergeant Furlong. Such a terrible shame. Sally, please calm down. Getting us killed won't help, will it? Perhaps I could drive. No, I want to go for a walk. Sally. I want to be on my own. This is a purple cuddlesome Truman. I only had a green one. Good. Why did the big man call Richard Martin cuddlesome? Take me here, Martin. You. I'm going to have a word with your mother. This is one of the adults. Yes, the infection is pretty advanced. He was one of the first in our area. Oh, to think that those kids could have ended up like this. There's no chance of that, thank goodness. Yes, we should have your antidote carted across the country by this evening. Beats me how it's so easily manufactured. We've been working at it day and night. Oh, it's easy enough when you know the cause. Yes, well, we didn't. It was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Mother Nature's a pretty complex thing, you know. This has nothing to do with Mother Nature, Dr. Peters, I can assure you. Ferrous sargalinia is strictly manufactured. A man-made virus? But who? Yes, and why? Or more to the point, how? That's simple. Amaze me. A hypodermic injection of sargol-17. Sargol-17? Used as a pesticide in the late 20... in the outer reaches of the Amazon. sargol is a fertilizer, sargol-16.8 a drug. Well, I've never heard of it. No. But how is it injected? Well, we check for puncture marks on the first day. The only common factor in any of the patients was that they were mostly kids. Even that wasn't 100% true. Perhaps you should have looked at their eyes. What? Every one of the patients I examined this morning had tiny puncture marks in the left eye, just below the pupil. That's where the infection started in each of them. We thought it was the glands. This poor chap must have gone blind immediately. Look at the growth under his lids. You mean all those kids will go blind? Not necessarily. But I expect most of them will need spectacles. Well, it lacks the grace of my roles, but I suppose beggars can't be choosers. There's been a new breakthrough in the battle against the space plague. Now that the miracle cure to the killer disease is being delivered and administered all over the country, only one vital question remains. Why did it happen? Damn him, and yet it's so typical of the interfering little do-gooder. If he developed a wart on his nose, he'd lance it with a hatpin rather than let the infection spread to his precious companions. Miracle cure, indeed. Wouldn't surprise me if he'd used this antiquated bucket of his to nip forward and collect the antidote from Varen Palmer himself. Which reminds me, I must do that myself sometime. How delightful to end the career of such an eminent scientist with my bare hands. Oh, yes, Doctor. I'll put your Type 40 to a much more entertaining use than you ever dared. Mind you, you could do with a bit of redecorating. I think black. But first, this is a command control to all units. Phase A is complete. Begin Phase B. How are you feeling? What? How are you feeling? Let me hold you. Are you well? I didn't pull your string. Whisk me away to another planet. Let me start again. Yes, I suppose that would be an answer. But don't you think you owe it to Martin at least? Truman, I was joking. Of course I'll carry on. I carried on when my mother died. I carried on when Eric walked out. Hell, I even carried on when Martin got sick the other day. I'll carry on because I always do. Life hasn't been that good then. No. It certainly could have been better. But I'll cope. I just wish... What? I just can't get it out of my head that it wasn't Richard. You mean... From the state of him? Well, it could have been anyone. And that's odd. Martin was saying just that. Oh, my God! Martin! Ah! Ah! Burning! He's burning me! Ah! Martin, open the door! It's locked! Somebody's locked! Help me! Martin, get out of the car here! Into the river! Jump! Get it off me! I'm trying! Get it off me! I've got it! Go to the side, Martin! It's the
the link. There must be one. Otherwise, how could they all have come into contact with the infection? You're saying that some maniac's been all over the country injecting kids' eyes and no one's noticed. There haven't been any recent epidemics, one that would need mass inoculation. You're not blaming the NHS. Anything's possible. There's got to be an answer and it's right in front of us. Yeah. Sally! Sally, did you... Is that Ricky in there? No, it's Truman. Where? In the ambulance. He got burnt. Sally, you're so true. I helped him out of the river. The bear just exploded. Bear? Mrs Milne, what bear? One of those wretched, cuddlesome things. It was sticking to Martin's hands. Truman saved his life. The bears, of course. What are you talking about? It's the cuddlesome bears. They're the answer, the link. Are you joking? Far from it, I'm afraid. We must get them banned. I'll have to get hold of one. Is there a shop near here that would sell them? Yes, just down Union Street. But, but Doctor. Dr. Peters, can I trust you to look after my friend Truman? Of course. Good, good. Tally ho! It's Sunday, Doctor. Are you all right? A little shaken. Well, I'm not surprised. I... Ricky's dead, Jim. How do you know? I identified the body at the factory. Foreman's. The man called Ricky Martin. Go back to the car, love. Sally, Foreman's. Isn't it Foreman's who makes those bears? I never want to see one of those bloody things again in my life. Well, I hate to be morbid, but you don't think there's a connection, do you? Hmm. Something get in your way, did it, old thing? Doctor, I know it's Sunday, but there was no need to break the window. I didn't. Look, the glass is all outside, Mum. It was broken from the inside. Well observed, Martin. You mean someone was trying to get out? That's right. Tell me. What do you notice about this shop? It's been looted, so what? What else? Stop playing games, Doctor. There aren't any cuddlesomes. Right again, Martin. Only this one. And he got trapped under a cupboard in the rush. There must have been about 50 of them trying to get out. You mean those things can move? Yes. I imagine they've disappeared all over the country now their task is over. You make them sound like living things. Perhaps they are. They're lumps of fur. With a microchip or two in them, I would imagine, and a motor unit to control the legs and the hypodermic needle. Not bad for $79.99. Why did mine go up? Good question. Did it talk to you? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Doctor. It asked me if I was feeling all right. And you were. There you are, then. A failsafe. What's going on, Doctor? Somebody is trying to wipe out an entire generation. Is the boy prepared, Mr. Turvey? Sleeping like a baby, Mr. Foreman. A perfect specimen, I might add. Of course. I must apologise if I doubted you before. I understand all the other children are recovering now. With unnamed help, of course. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, ingenious idea of yours. Well, I must be off. You'll send the other equipment on. It should be with you by the end of the day. Excellent. Well, au revoir, then. Yes, goodbye. <coughs> this fur's considerably stronger than polyester. Oh, I'm afraid I've broken another kitchen knife. Uh, mind this for a minute, will you? I'll go and fetch a laser cutter from your cabbage patch. Another ambulance? That's the sixth this hour. Go and help the doctor with his cabbages, will you, Martin? I'm going to pull this thing's head off. It's gone! It has. My ship! Lot said you were looking for cabbages. Oh, I've been such a fool! to kill my son, would you, you little bugger? What did he look like? Tall, brown hair, a deep voice, sort of posh. Perhaps that cuddlesome wasn't meant for you, then. He must have recognised Truman from the graveyard. Ah, ah, I see you've been more successful than I was. It's amazing how strong you can be when you're determined enough. Indeed. Hmm, I was right about the microchip and the hypo. Uh, what's this? Two hypos. That is interesting. Is it double barrels? Maybe. How do you make it talk, Martin? He won't touch it. Can't say I blame him. Uh, don't worry, I'll do it. Ah, yes. My name is Cuddlesome. I love you. What's See your See that? Name? The hypodermic's engaged. I wonder what it wants us to say. Does it really make any difference? What's your name? Martin Mill. Give me a cuddle, Martin. Oh, no, you don't. Give him to me. Sally, hold him back. It's about to fire. What's going on? I'm afraid you've just been treated to some of our friend's hypnotic charm. 
That needle could have ended up in your eye. Martin, come away from it. Over here. One hypo filled with sargol, one with something else. But one person in particular? It's looking for someone then. I wonder who. Get rid of it. Now. Hello? Sally, it's Jim. Glad I caught you. Look, I've got to be quick. There's a whole new spate of accidents. It's like the end of the world in here. It's just that I remembered something that might be relevant. The Pleasure Palace. That new place in town. Yes, Disney World. What on earth? Hello, Doctor. I don't believe it. This won't hurt a bit. He's been cut off. I think This we'll... Disney World? Where is it? It's in town. It isn't really Disney World. It's Coversome's Pleasure Palace. We were going there next week. Pleasure Palace. Is it important? I would think so. I think your other son might be there. Ricky? What makes you say that? The man Martin described is a man of deception. One way or another, he's deceived us all. He'll be there? Very probably. I didn't think it would be so easy to get in. Perhaps we're expected. Come on, then. Show yourself. No one's in. Ricky. Oh, turn the lights off. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Uncle Derby's Pleasure Palace. A place where your wildest dreams come true. Yes, yes, yes. Very impressive. How about coming down for a little chat? Or are you still playing dead? So you're not quite as naive as I thought you were, Doctor. I have to admit your little death scene took me in at first. But it hardly took a genius to work out who was manufacturing Sargol 17 200 years before its introduction to Earth. Good facilities on board your ship were there? Good enough to cure myself of my own addiction. My TARDIS may have been a little run down, but its medical laboratories were spotless. Pity about the rest of it. I assume you crash-landed here. My ship came to rest on these gentle shores, yes. But I refused to let these backward times bore me. I built up a business empire. Foreman Incorporated. That's right. Not only is it the largest insurance company in the world, but it owns the rights on the Cuddlesome Dolls, Picture Strips, and thousands of related products. The profit is phenomenal, I'm happy to say. So's the tax, I imagine. My dear lady, I don't pay taxes. I see no point in it. Does Thatcher know? I imagine she's under his influence in some way. She has a bear. What do you want with all that money? Power. Nothing so base, my dear. There's nothing more base than trying to wipe out an entire generation. It's a direct contravention of the first law of time. Oh, Doctor, the laws of time don't exist anymore. The Time Lords Have wouldn't... a long dead race. The few of us that are left are free to meddle with time as we please. And why not start with this ridiculous little planet? You're tampering with the lives of thousands, maybe millions of people. Oh, don't be so lily-livered. I'm enjoying myself. It's freedom, Doctor. Exquisite, delectable freedom. Freedom to do anything we please. I won't let you. Oh, and how do you propose to stop me? Oh, yes, I admit my plan suffered a minor setback with your so-called miracle cure, but I'm quite happy to settle for a small anomaly for a start before I do some real damage. You can't! I shall! Such a shame you won't be around to enjoy the devastation. Oh, by the way, next time you let a renegade die in your lap, take care of your keys. You never know whose light-fingered hands they're going to end up in. I didn't understand a word of that. Was that a time machine? Uh, yes. Anomaly. What did he mean, anomaly? What? What's going on? Ah, hang on to something. I'm slipping. Martin! Martin, where are you? Mum! I can't see him, Doctor. It's pitch black. I'm frightened, Mum. Don't worry, darling. Stay there. We'll find you. Watch your step. I have a feeling we're not alone in here. But I'm terrified. There are more of them. What are you doing, Doctor? Sorry, was that your foot? Uh, there was some sort of console over there where Askren was standing. If I can find the right switch. Ah, Martin! Don't worry, Mum, miss me. Don't move, either of you. They may well be homing in on vibration. Uh, I think I'm right. Here it is. Let there be light! Yeah. Of them. 
down here, quickly. This does. Our salvation, a swimming pool. Martin, do you hear me? Get ready to run to the pool. Now, let's see, we need a diversion. Now, Martin, run now! Thank goodness you made it. Mind the edge, Martin, some of those things have tentacles. What are they? They all seem to be cross-bred, genetically engineered hybrid creatures. You mean they're real? Oh, yes. Get back! Ah! That looks like a crocodile gone wrong! I think it was, once. My God! In your future, someone will at last see sense and ban this vile experimentation for good. But that's not until... Oh, my word. I think I know what's going on, and I think I might even know where our friend Askren might be at this very moment. Who read the Cuddlesome books? Uncle Turvey! I doubt he would write any more if you could see this place. On the contrary, he's responsible for it. What? This and them. Uncle Turvey's? Ronald Turvey, a name as much despised in history as Hitler, Stalin. It's been staring me in the face all the time. What has? We've got to get out of here. How? And what do you mean? There's a lift back there. Perfect. Right. Press up, will you please? What is going on? I'll explain later. Quickly, quickly! Just in time for the next flight. Do you mean it's going to take off from the roof? Yes. I'm afraid here's where we have to part company. What? I've got a jet to catch. I only hope it's going to the right place. How are you going to get on board? Where there's a will, there's a way. Bye-bye. Oh, uh, keep your heads down when we take off, won't you? And take care. Where's he going? Do you want to find out? Yes. Come on, then, and keep your head down. All right, Mum. Ouch! you doing here? You want an explanation, Doctor? Yes. And you said Ricky might still be alive and involved in this. I have to find out, so explain. Well, it concerns your future, the future of your country. How? You know, you two astonish me. You're accepting everything I say with no pause for thought. Doctor, I thought my son had died. You tell me it isn't so. I have to take every chance to get him back. So far, everything you've predicted has come true. If I sat and thought rationally about all of this, then no, I'd probably write you off as a crank. But after battling our way through those walking toys downstairs, I think, I hope you know what you're talking about. For the sake of Richard, I have to believe you. All right. Um, now, it's difficult to know where to start. Um, in the year... Uh, towards the end of this century, there'll be a change in the way your society lives its daily life. A return to the exploitation and corruption of your ancestors. Why, hurry up, come on. Quickly, we gotta get him. There's no need for concern, Mr. Turvey. I told you, the work you are doing here is paramount to the development of civilization. But it is imperfect, Mr. Foreman. In what way? There are too many mistakes. You hear those alarm bells? Yes, most annoying. Uh, it means another of the prototypes has escaped. It's probably running riot at this very moment. Then it will be disposed of. Oh, yes. I'm sure it will. But there should be no need for it. The animals, they... They go wild. It's a reaction to the treatment. It shouldn't be happening. And it won't. Not on the final operation. How can you be sure? Every animal we have operated on has either gone insane or died within hours. I can't risk using the boy if that's going to happen to him as well. It won't. Mr. Foreman, with respect, you don't know that. I'm the one who's in charge of the operations. I'm the one who's got his hands dirty. And I'm the one who's seen the results. 
No one can be sure that the final operation will succeed where all others have failed. I can. The equipment I am flying out from England to this base will make sure of its success. It will go ahead, Mr. Turvey. The creatures are called slumbers, a hybrid of pig, bear and man. They will be turned into slaves, completely exploited. And Turvey's responsible for that. Initially, your society believes them a freak of nature discovered in South Africa. It's only later that the world discovers they're man-made and should never have existed. Needless to say, the world is appalled. I should have realized when I first saw the Cuddleson toys. If only I'd been thinking straight, I might have what done. What do you mean? Basically, that is, without a little fur here and there, Cuddleson is a pretty good blueprint for a slumber. Turvey will be trying to turn fiction into fact. By implanting the cell, which will grow and eventually become hereditary, you will create a sense of calm within the beast, a sense of domesticity. They could be pets. Uh, in a way. Mm -hmm. I won't do it. I beg your pardon? I engineered this project, and I want to see the creatures created my way. Naturally. Ah. I think Furlong got it. I won't go on. My, my, Mr. Turvey, you are becoming so tiresome. Very well, I shall proceed with the operation myself. You will be escorted back to England for the moment my transport and equipment arrives. That is, if you're prepared to keep your mouth shut. If not, I could always cut out your tongue. What? Mind you, I never was very good with a scalpel. Knowing me, I might accidentally slip and cut your throat. <laughs> He's going to be the first one. I'm afraid you're right. No, we can't let him. But why him? There must be something very special about Richard for Askren to go to all that trouble to get hold of him. I imagine his cuddlesome gave him a shot of a stomach bug instead of Sargon. Hence the other hypodermic. Doctor, what can we do? Not much yet, I'm afraid. These boxes, what's in them? Operating equipment, I should imagine. Then we can smash them up. Easier said than done. They're magnetically sealed, impenetrable. Couldn't we push them overboard? Perhaps, if there were ten of us. We could at least try. Why waste the effort? Far better to sleep now. Sleep? It's going to be a long journey. Don't worry. Without all this, well, you can hardly have started operating yet. Oh. Anesthetized. What are you doing to me? Where am I? <clears throat> Mom? Uncle Turvey? <laughs> Look, don't... Worry, Richard. You're quite safe. Nothing is going to harm you now. <sighs> oh, it's no use. We're not getting anywhere. Mum, we can't give up. Perhaps we'd get a little further if we had some help. Yes, Doctor. You've been sitting there for ages. I think we're landing. Listen. to wait at a west block. I can only spare a couple of them. The rest are chasing a freak. Hello. The policeman. What the bloody hell are you doing here? Stowaways. I found them with the stuff. How alarming. I thought my robot toys would have disposed of you. I must say I admire your determination, Mrs Milne. I wish I admired something about you. Where's the other one? What other one? There was only these two. You fool, Furlong. This was a diversion. The doctor must be loose in the base. He could do no end of damage. Find him, now! Sir! I wouldn't smile, young man. There's so very little for you to smile about. The doctor's outwitted you. Oh, has he indeed? If you let Turvey lay a finger on my son, I shall kill you. You can't go on now. We've found you out. My, what a brave little boy. And what makes you so sure you'll live to tell anyone? Hello? Someone in there? This way! Ah, oh, hello. Uh, don't worry, I won't give you away. Shh, there's no need to be afraid. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's have a look at those paws. Oh dear, looks like you've scratched yourself. Escaped from your cage, did you? Where are you going? No wonder you wanted to get out. The stench is incredible. All right, all right. Let's see. 
Oh dear, how do I know you're not going to claw me to pieces if I let you out? There, in there. Oh dear, no choice now. If I can just... <laughs> <laughs> My friend, it was probably for the best. Which way now, I wonder? Keep the incision open. I'm going to fetch another fusion link. Washing your hands of it? Or haven't you the decency? Who are you? God! I, I wouldn't. Some of this gas is pretty unstable, and I'd hate to endanger you with a careless explosion. <laughs> Do you smoke? What are you doing here? I'm here to stop you going ahead with one of the worst abominations of your century. <laughs> what? The creature you're creating will become the first of a new race. Yes. Yes, a race that will go down in history. A race that will be exploited by mankind. Nonsense, old man. They'll live side by side, in harmony. Is that what he's told you? Mr. Foreman is a man of vision. He's a liar. What you're doing is inhumane, Turvey. It's tampering with the laws of nature. My name will have a place in the history books. Your name will be despised. You can't do it, Turvey. You... <laughs> Thank you, Furlong. Sorry to interrupt your work, Mr. Turvey. Oh, do take him away. And don't let anyone interfere again. Oh, shut up or I'll break your arm. Don't you talk to my mum like that. Martin, be quiet. Doctor, is he dead? Ah, my friends. I trust your time in our impromptu cell didn't cause you too much discomfort. Sorry about the food. Rather basic, I'm afraid. But then I believe a little abstinence never does any harm. Now, Furlong, if you could attend to matters elsewhere. Uh, yes, Mr. Foreman. You? Keep them covered. What have you done to the doctor? Not enough, yet. Is that a promise or a threat? Ah, oh, how kind of you to join us. Not at all, not at all. Have you brought us here to watch you gloat? Oh, doctor, you wound me. You make me sound no better than that jackass from the academy you always used to cross swords with. Give me some credit, please. I'm a man of style. Next to me, at the subtlety of a nuclear bomb. Yes, he would never have wasted time with microchips and teddy bears. He'd have gone straight to the telephone directory. Precisely. And where would the fun have been in that? Why, Milne, Askren? What's so special about that boy? That's my son! Mr. Turvey's work is of prime importance in the development of the slumber, you'll agree. With my help, he is turning his fantasy into flesh and blood. I assume you know what supposedly happens in 20 years' time. His work is unveiled to the world by the press. Correct. How fitting, then, that Turvey should be operating on the very journalist destined to bring about his downfall. What? Your son, dear lady, Martin Milne. Martin? It is a pleasing anomaly. You murdering swine! But I'm Martin Milne. What did you say? I'm Martin. You've got Richard. He's my brother. Mistaken identity, was it, Askren? We were playing our game. We swapped names for the day. He's lying. Oh, dear. God, shoot him now! No, you don't! Oh, ah. Get her, cretin! Here's the gun, Mum! Nobody move or I'll blow Foreman's head off! You're bluffing. She's the boy's mother, Askren. I hate to say it, but your little anomaly has just bitten the dust. Martin's alive and well and heading for a career in journalism. It'll take him a few years before he's old enough to have his allegations taken seriously, of course, but that'll come in time. Now, if you'd like to ensure that Richard is released, I think we'll be on our way. I'm afraid that won't be possible. The operation has already been carried out. It was a complete success. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the world's first cuddlesome boy, Richard. Stand here, my boy. Beautiful, isn't it? Richard. It's an abhorrence. It's magnificent. Richard. Ma. No cry, Ma. Back you come, my boy. Did you see its strength, Mr. Turvey? I congratulate you. Oh. Thank you. 
Mr. Foreman. And it responds so well to you. A biological miracle, wouldn't you say, Doctor? Well, now, Mr. Turvey, if you'd like to leave Richard in the caring hands of his family, I've arranged a little repayment for all your hard work. <laughs> the boy oh. is repayment enough. Maybe, maybe, but uh, Furlong has the uh, icing on the cake, to coin a phrase. You'll find him in your laboratory. Oh, <laughs> if you insist. Uh, excuse me, then. Stay here, Richard. There's a good boy. It's killed her. Ricky, you've killed her! Nothing to say, Doctor. No words of condemnation or appreciation. It's not very often one witnesses the birth of a new race. My friend, Mr. Foreman is overjoyed. I... What on earth has happened? The operation is over. Mr. Foreman didn't need them anymore. You shot them? What kind of animal are you? These were, were talented scientists. Without them, the creature's conception would have been impossible. As I said... The operation's over. What are you... Surely you're not going to... The boss's orders, Mr. Turvey. He? Ordered me? Dead? But you can't... You, you either get shot now, or blown to bits later. What are you talking about? The whole place is rigged with explosive charges. Just one brush of a button, and kaboom. That's it. Of course, Mr. Foreman and I will be well out of it. Uh. And what's to stop him blowing it up now, huh? With you inside it. <laughs> Think I'm stupid, do you? I've got the button. Now then, Mr. Turvey. Time for bye-byes. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm so sorry, Furlong. But I don't intend to die. Quite. Yet. There you are, my boy. Off you go. What a momentous but pitiful sight, don't you think, Doctor? The first slumber making its first footsteps into the big, wide world. No doubt it will find an ape and start its first family. I'd like to stay and see the results, but I have a lot more important tasks to perform. Tasks? Games, more like. I never claimed that work and pleasure were inseparable. No. Where's Furlong, I wonder? Surely you weren't intending to take him with you. Mr. Turvey, with a gun. What a surprise. Doctor, take the boy out of here. It's Mr. Foreman I want, not you. That's not a very wise idea, Mr. Turvey. Shut up. Go, Doctor. Get as far away as you can. Come on, Marty. You're a fool, Turvey. He's a meddling idiot. And you're a liar. You are going to have me killed. Nonsense. I asked Furlong to bargain with you. With a gun? I admit Furlong's persuasive powers lack subtlety, but... You're sure. lying, Mr. Foreman. Everything you've said to me has been a lie. I funded your operation. Only to plot its destruction. You were going to destroy all my work. With a press of this button, kaboom, he said. Uh, Mr. Turvey, I suggest that you look behind you. I had a vision. You gave me a vision. <laughs> ah! 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 Insipid worm. Ah! 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 You can't leave me here. It killed me. Mr. Foreman. No, 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 you idiot. Leave that alone. One, two, 
twee. Zo. Bye, Martin. Bye, Ricky. Martin. I don't know what to say to you. If there's anything... Why didn't you stop him, Doctor? Why did you let him do it? You let that man do that to my brother. I... I... You let him kill my mom. Martin. Get off me. Just leave me alone. Martin, you must understand. The web of time, it had to be like this. All this, it, it had to happen. And you had to see it happen. That... There was nothing I could have done to stop it. Askren? So, the wolf returns to gloat over its victims, does it? I don't know why I ever... <laughs> Get back! What is it? Askren. Where are you? Show yourself. Where have you scrawled it this time? On the ceiling? On the floor? This is a nightmare, all of it. And you had to add the final touch, didn't you? You had to make sure I was absolutely alone. Why does it have to be like this? All of it. Is there nothing I can do to stop this suffering? You can go back. This is a time machine. You can go back. This discovery could throw new light on the chain of development from ape to man. Well then, it's time to go from African apes to American reindeer as we have a little festive cheer here on Radio 1. Sylvia, could you wash some more cups, please, and get some more 50p's? I'm right out. Okay, lovely. What's good? I don't believe it. Doctor? Doctor, are you in there? Truman! Ah, sorry I'm late. Where have you been? Tampering, I'll tell you about it one day. I would have been here earlier, but I think the drift compensator's overcompensated. By six months? That long? Truman, have you noticed? It's snowing. Of course it is. It's Christmas. I thought you'd abandoned me. I had to get a job. There's not much call for colonial management on Dark Ages Earth. <laughs> it's hardly the Dark Ages. You'd have fooled me. Truman, you've got an apron on. I've been cooking. Bacon and eggs. Two pounds twenty-nine. Three pounds fifty with chips. That's outrageous! Don't know. Doctor, you did realise you've landed in the middle of the high street. Uh, ah, so I have. <laughs> um, you'll be wanting to stay here, then. I... Well, to tell you the truth, I am owed three weeks paid holiday. Oh, come on. sitting comfortably yes now we'll begin hello i'm gary russell i'm the producer of these plays and more importantly 
I'm the person you write your checks payable to. <laughs> That's a very important thing. Sitting next to me is Nicholas Briggs. Hello. He plays the doctor. Sitting in front of us is a vacuum cleaner that pretends it's a microphone stand. It's terribly modern here at Audio Visuals Land. We have the most high-tech equipment possible. Now then, we're going to start off this exciting Audio Visuals on tape section by talking to Nick. Well, talk to me. <laughs> right, Nick. Um, one of the more popular questions that's coming up at the moment in connection with the fourth season of our plays is in Planet of Lies. The doctor had his head shaved so that the Daleks could stick their protuberances into his skull. I know. Everyone wants to know, are you still bald? I mean, we know Nick Briggs is bald, but is the doctor bald? Get out. Just All right. get out. No, um, uh, no, he probably isn't, actually. No, he definitely isn't. I've thought about this uh, long and hard. and uh, Five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. No, uh, and uh, obviously the, the whole adventure of Planet of Lies takes quite some time to, um, what's the word, elapse. Uh, so I, no, by the end of Planet of Lies, I expect he's got quite a, a nice little uh, furry top to his head. And by the time, of course, we get into well, uh, Deadfall, Deadfall. I mean, how, how long is the gap between Planet of Lies and Deadfall? So that's that question over and done with. Yes. He is not bald. Now, Nick, there is, um, we're getting lots of requests, people saying, are we going to do a fifth season? Oh, now, of course, it's a little early to tell because we're having enough problems getting season four out of the way. Mm. But, um, Nick, would you be interested in carrying on with a fifth season? Do you see yourself playing the Doctor for an eternity? Are you going to be the Tom Baker of audiovisuals? <laughs> well, I well, think uh, I could put him away. Oh, uh, well, that's a hard question. Uh, <laughs> well, you see, it's not an acting part. No, I mean, I think the... Tom was like a light bulb, uh, you know. <laughs> it glitters. Um... No, uh, I think the pivotal thing in answering this question is referring to what you say in the question, which is that it's a long way off and we're having enough trouble getting season four out. So I'm not even really going to think about it. Right, I have in my hands here a letter. Now, we haven't had many letters yet on Requiem and Deadfall because at the point that we're recording this for Cuddlesome, the advert for Deadfall and Requiem only came out a week ago, so people have been writing in and ordering it. But we have had already a couple of comments back, including one from Jamie Woolley, who lives up in Cumbria, who's uh, one of our regular, you can't say readers, regular listeners. He's talking about Requiem here. Isn't this driving realism a little too far? I mean, the companions are dropping like nine pins. First Nadia, then Rhea, now Fionara. It's quite a shame that she had to die, because I really liked her. Now that, to my mind, is exactly right, because when we created Fionara, my whole point of saying to Andy, I said, create... This is Andy Lane. Andy Lane, who wrote it. I said, create a companion that is just so totally likeable that everyone will want her to stay, and they'll all be pleased when she's going on board the TARDIS, and then we kill her. <laughs> to really make it clear that this justice guy means business, isn't it, really? And there is a lot, lot worse yet to come. Yes. Now. 